starting the proceedings for uh, West Bengal. First runs on the board for Karnataka with an extra. There, off the bat, off the mark is Ganga. She goes off with a confident move. First legal delivery. And because this is a, a national game, there will be four groups. Group A, Group B, Group C and Group D. Karnataka is placed in the group A once again. The non-striker probably uh, puts it across. There's a slight misfield in the deep, a deep uh, square leg. Gets a couple of runs for the uh, bowler as well. Who's been uh, really nice until now. On target after uh, the first delivery. That comes in at a very, very formidable pace as well towards the deep backward square leg. The fielder had to cover a lot of distance. She had to run in from uh, square leg to deep backward. Narisa at uh, deep backward square leg does a good job, does a really good job in saving a couple of runs for her team. So the fielding for the West Bengal from the word go has been put under test. Nice to see where the bowler is running towards a mark very, very quickly, not wasting time because uh, already, as mentioned, this is going to be an 18-over game for a little bit of a delayed start of the due. So uh, seven overs is a mandatory for a B1 bowler. Towards the offside this time, towards covers. That's the first one that goes uh, in that area but very safe as uh, Pratimosh Ghosh, the captain herself, near covers. Once again, wanting to run through for that uh, buy is what I feel. Let's look at Anish. Yes, that's what he says. Anish says buys. Yeah. So runs coming in all forms in the first over itself for Karnataka in th at the end of the first over. Nine for no loss on the board. A good beginning, very, very good beginning at the Indus in Bank Women's National T20 Tournament organized by Kabi under Samarthanam. Seven overs, uh, mandatory B1 bowler. That means that will uh, really excite the Karnataka batters because they'll be really interested in scoring off the B1 bowlers as well. Because the captain, Varsha, was very, very happy saying that even if uh, we had lost the toss, we are happy to bat first because even we wanted to bat first, even after winning the toss, as uh, Jacinta Topo comes in for uh, West Bengal to start the second over. Is she right? No, I don't think so. It's Jacinta. It's probably the bowler changes. Asmiti Mahato. Astami Mahato comes in. Wanted to go for uh, Jacinta, but changing the mind. The captain Pratima Ghosh goes in with uh, Astami Mahato. Pacer, probably, uh, is it? Switching of ends as well. So that means it is Jacinta Topo. <laughs> right. She's going to start the proceedings there. Jacinta. Slow one and behind the stumps it goes. Will that be the first boundary for Karnataka? Yes, it is. Bad loose delivery down the leg side by Jacinta. 
and uh, she does not leave that alone is the striker Harman Preet Kaur being the uh, brand ambassador for this Indus and Bank Women's National T20 tournament for the blind that is what uh, Harman Preet will be really happy of the boundary once again towards the uh, square leg swiveled across ah oh, slight bit misfield will allow the batter to come back for the second gangamma is on a roll from the word go she's striking it well she's timing the ball really well and jacinta needs to get the line right very very soon and once again very very slow in pace i think at the short mid wicket that was a b1 fielder couldn't gauge where uh, the ball goes yeah that is mahek lakra at uh, short mid wicket b1 so probably if you're watching this for the first time and let me explain what the categories actually mean b1 fielders or batters b1 player especially have uh, zero vision there's no vision whatsoever that's an extra delivery jacinta has to rebowl that b2 can see at 2 meters and b3 can see for 6 meters from their eye length that is what the categories are oh wanted to go for a big one misses it out completely even though with the miss timing she'll go in to get another single as suja roy another b1 uh, fielder at short square leg couldn't stop the batters from going through across and this is kavya once again she strikes well she's been the uh, thick of the scorer out of eight deliveries she's got 14 now is kavya ganga actually now on strike ganga ma waits waits for the ball cannot make any pace from the bat jacinta now probably getting the uh, line right and not allowing the batter to uh, utilize any bit of a pace that's the end of the over uh, so after two overs it's 20 for no loss karnataka are up to a flyer anish and hari are the umpires today uh, watching anish helping out uh, the bowlers to come in and this is going to be uh, once again murafa continuing for west bengal and uh, in group a we have karnataka gujarat madhya pradesh and west bengal so they'll be playing against each other and group b we have odisha jharkhand rajasthan haryana and in group c we have andhra pradesh maharashtra chandigarh and telangana and that's a no ball that's a no ball for the first one and i think it's on the uh, center line rule which is there very very specially in our blind cricket i just need to explain you out better if you're playing imagine a table tennis match and uh, the first bounce should come in your court and then the uh, opposition scored but then again if that does not happen that's a no ball but now another boundary once again a very very strong shot down the ground and uh, she tried her best to stop that is pratima ghosh the captain i cannot stop it pratima ghosh generally a very very safe pair of hands a b3 fielder had to run in from mid on to long on covered good strike but then uh, couldn't cover it across ganga once again misses out oh she be disappointed with that it was wide down the leg side she wanted to give it uh, a huge blow behind the stumps but then missing it out completely on the way of uh, hitting the ball too hard now now once again she does it in the same fashion does get a huge amount of meat on the bat and gets past another boundary 
second one in this over. Gangamma is making sure that Karnataka have uh, the upper hand in the power play. What a strike that was by Gangamma. Just wide down the leg side. Making sure she got a lot of bat on that ball. And going past the keeper behind is Ashmita. Now, what will uh, Murafa do? She first has to correct a line first. Because Gangamma will not allow anything which is wide down. And now, once again, corrects it really well on the off. And equally well batted there by Gangamma. Just processing it to the covers. And steals a single. Has to be said, Kavya, she's uh, really coordinated well with Gangamma. She's not been the heroic way. Another extra, another extra by uh, Marufa. He's just talking about Kavya. She knows that Gangamma is going great guns and she's been able to rotate strikes every single time. Just like that. Just like that. Once again, straight to the fielder at. Uh, Short square leg, but then they steal the single out. So that is what Kavya is doing really well in putting number seven back on strike, Gangama. And Marufa, in her second over, needs to understand that she's given away 22 runs already and needs to get the line right. A huge appeal going down, going down the leg side. She's just checking there, Marufa, with uh, Anish. On target this time, no problem. Cannot stop it at square leg. And had to run a long way from deep square leg to deep backward. That's a very good effort. Stopping a certain boundary there, the fielder. The batters have run three. What a good effort in the deep. So three overs has been completed by West Bengal. Karnataka scoring more than 10 runs and over 37 for no loss. His opening pair has put up. It's a very, very good start after losing the toss. And that's the reason why uh, Varsha was very happy. Even if she had lost the toss, she said, this is what we wanted to do. And the reason for that is Gangamma. She's batted really well. The body language of West Bengal, they have uh, not let the shoulders down. I think the captain has come into the attack. Pratima Ghosh, I think that is, yeah. Yeah. And uh, she starts off on target, but Gangama once again straight down the ground. Very, very strong in the V. Always playing straight is Gangama. And also even behind the stump V. Even there she's very strong. The number seven make a note. And these are the girls knocking at the doors of the uh, Indian national team. And that's why this Indus in Bank Women's National T20 Cricket Tournament is being conducted by Kabi and Samarthanam once again. Pratima Ghosh puts it on target, but Gangama fires it towards the uh, mid-off. But a strong shot for a couple of more runs. What's more interesting with Gangama's batting is uh, when she goes, she goes full throttle. There's no half measures with her. Now wants to take the cap off. Yeah, complete concentration, maybe. Goes, uh, give it to Anish. That's why I like the umpire. Also very, very interesting to uh, have the thought going. Uh, how much of score will West Bengal want to chase down? Because this looks like a very, very strong Karnataka side already. And Pratima Ghosh, the skipper, she 
She was happy that she won the toss. She wanted to feel first. It went their way. But the start, yeah, it's not. It's 41 already on the board. Once again on target, no problem. Straight to uh, mid wicket, probably a B1 fielder there. Yeah. Mehek. That shot mid wicket. Couldn't gauge the sound of the ball. It's so important that the sound has been needed. And it's a no ball again. And uh, the reason for that is that one, the first bounce should be on the Pratima's end. And then before it reaches Gangama, it has to bounce another time. So that is uh, that, that is what did not happen. So remember, for the uh, mid-line no ball, there's no free hits. And only for the front foot overstepping, there are free hits. That's a rule. Wanting to go towards the covers, making some room for herself. Pratima herself has to go. As uh, Purunima was a B1 fielder there in covers. She does well, does well. Pratima Ghosh looks like uh, a player on mission as a skipper. She has to keep this together for her team. One straightish, straightish fielder just behind the umpire there. One more step behind him, probably a no ball on the field. But then, that is what Gangama has done. She's played so straight at uh, mid on and mid off, had to find another place between them. Wanting to go for the reverse. Kavya connects it this time into the gap, but still just a single. Oh, not a good return. Not a good return. Convert that into two. So very agile in the running between the wickets as well. Kavya and Gangamma. Small little fumble there by Marufa. At a deep backward point. Yeah, nice that if you hear what Pratima Ghosh actually says. Uh, once again, fumble. And this might run away to the boundary as well. Yes, it does. At uh, shot backward square. She had to do a better job on the location. Marufa letting that ball go through her the legs. And then the boundary has been found. Now, this time, Kavya once again with the reverse working very well for her. And she's taken on Pratima. Uh, there, that's what I was mentioning. Pratima actually... Gives a very clear verbal audio warning to everybody that she's going to bowl it. Ready, batter, she asks and says, play. Such a good sportsman spirit, I'll tell you. Half stop, half stop, a shot backward. Will allow uh, Kavya for another couple of runs. This has been leaking runs. 50 on the board already. Now for Karnataka. Very, very well done. At four overs, uh, it's... Uh, 53 there on the board. What a partnership. 53 run partnership by the opening pair for Karnataka. Opening partnership. 50 on the board. 53 at the end of four overs. Gangamma and Kavya have made sure they put Karnataka right up there in the front. Now it's going to be Mehek Lakra. She's a B1 category bowler. She comes in within the power play, the last over of power play. Because it's an 18 over game. We'll have a 5 over power play, not a 20 over, 6 over 1 as Kavya there. 24 of 13 deliveries and Ganga 22 of 13 deliveries. How very well they have coordinated with each other. How very well they have complemented each other. Uh, that's uh, what you call is fabulous partnership because the load has been shared equally well by both the batters right now Gangamma what will Mehek do now you need to understand if there has to be a break in the scoring the partnership has to be broken can Mehek do it can she put one on target and make sure there's a wrong shot coming in from Gangamma which we haven't seen yet Oh, that's way off target. It's way, way off target. It's going to be a wide. Yeah, we understand generally B1 bowlers with completely uh, zero visuals. That's been uh, there. 
54 of just 26 deliveries. What a start. Karnataka will be really happy with the start. They want to capitalize on this and probably comfortably cross 150 mark. Now, May puts it on target as he's got him. Oh, that's a big breakthrough. Can you believe this? West Bengal have struck gold. And that's Gangamma who has to go back. Unbelievable. Mahek with the first delivery. With uh, being so, so off target. Watch this. Gangamma did not pick a slow one which was targeted well at her leg stump. And she's lost it. That's a first breakthrough and West Bengal are elated. And Pratima Ghosh, how much of uh, an appreciation that she's been given to Mehek. Wow, this is what I said. The scoring can be stopped if the wickets, if the partnership can be broken. Oh my God, Mehek. And she's uh, been the hero now for West Bengal. And Pratima Ghosh, very, very happy. And why not? Another B1 batter that has to be coming out because... That's a rule where the circulation has to be proper as Varsha comes out as a B1 batter and runner, of course, will be Gangamma. Runner will be there for a B1 batter always. As Varsha comes in, she's played 10 matches, 230 is her uh, aggregate, 62 run order, and that's the reason she's been the skipper, no doubt. She was very confident that she also wanted to bat first. They've got a good start, but what a comeback here by Mehek. In the last over of power play, removing the dangerous Gangamma. It brings in at number three, the skipper. Now remember, whatever Varsha scores off the bat, it's going to be one plus one. So if Varsha scores a single, it's going to be two runs. And... Uh, Nothing on the extras, though it's only on the bats. Whatever comes out of Varsha's bat as runs will be counted as a as a double. Uh, it's going to be really interesting now to see what Mehek does. She's got uh, the confidence going. She's got that adrenaline rush from the West Bengal side. Now, skipper Varsha to face Mehek. who's already got a big breakthrough. Where will Mahek land this? Gives it a full bounty and Varsha is off the mark. Immediately off target. So that's two runs on the board. Varsha off the mark with a couple. She puts it through a square leg. And that's not the right delivery for a, for a batter who's scored 230 runs in her career out of just 10 matches. Once again, completely off target. Can this be scored off? Yes, it has. Kavya puts it out for another single at uh, square leg. Puts Varsha back on strike. Lovely to uh, hear to the body language of the West Bengal fielders and players. And nice, nice that uh, the wicket keeper, Astami Mahoto. She also helps Varsha in marking her guard. Completely off target again, Mehek. Varsha waits for the delivery. No, does not get it. Yes, Varsha, it's going to be wide. And uh, that's what happens when uh, you have a B1 bowler. It can go either ways. It can actually bring you a big breakthrough or there can be those extras because uh, the visual motions are completely nil. So another wide, another wide. Now Pratima should guide her. Yeah, that's what she's doing. That is what she's doing. Pratima is actually clapping and making sure. Wow, this is a fabulous coordination. You, you speak about... Uh, corporate team games you speak about corporate team building activities i always request watch this watch this for team building watch this for team coordination how many times have you seen a skipper guiding a b1 bowler like that it's really heartwarming now is she on target no no but still varsha puts it across behind astami 
and Astami had to do better. It's a couple they have ran and the ball has stopped on the boundary lines and they come back for the third. Oh, that's six runs. What's that out once again? And she drags it behind Astami. That is what is nice. That's a six run on the board because they ran three runs and the, even the ball stopped just before the boundary lines. And because Varsha is a B1 batter, six runs being added to her kitty. 65 now for one couple more deliveries in the power play. Uh, this is a runaway start by Karnataka batters. Uh, nice to see even uh, Astami behind the stumps guiding Mehek. I, I also want to see Astami going towards the off peg and guiding her. She's clapping from outside the leg stump. Yeah, probably that also might be an error. And that's why another extra. So if Astami wants to guide Mehek, she just needs to come back towards the off peg. Now, now, Pratima, she has to do this, isn't it? And she has to do this. Center of the wicket. And she has to guide Mehek really well. And But behind, for me, that's the issue. Astami needs to guide outside the off stump. And that's outside the off stump. That's nice. Oh, did not pick it, Kavya. Kavya did not pick it at all. She was expecting the ball towards the onside, maybe. And the ball actually uh, goes past her off peg. Has to listen to it more often, Kavya. Being a, a B3 batter, she could have probably sighted it better. Probably uh, six meters off sight, and now she connects it. Connects it well, but then there is protection behind. A deep mid wicket keeps it down only to uh, one. Sixty-seven for one. What a power play that they've got after five overs. Sixty-seven for one now. And that's the end of the power play of five overs because it's an eighteen-over game. And uh, Pratima Ghosh, the skipper, comes back into the attack. Right, Karnataka women. Right, I was thinking Pratima Ghosh, but no, she's guided another B1 bowler. I think it's uh, Suja Roy, probably, or uh, Katrina Kujur. She starts off with a wide, just wanting to uh, gauge about the bowler as well. Yeah, once again, Pratima goes, does this. Suja Roy, yeah, as we probably expected or guessed maybe. We're just waiting for that uh, behind the camera, behind the bowler angle to switch on. It's Kavya. Now, oh, probably a no ball, is it? Oh, it's a wide, it's a wide. The ball actually did not bounce in uh, Suja Roy's end. First, that's the rule. It has to be bouncing there. And then it goes to the batter before uh, the bounce. That's what the rule is. 69 for one after power play. Uh, bounces uh, in Suja's end, but again a wide. So that's what I say where B1 bowlers, when they come into the attack, 
seven overs for them they have to bowl mandatory power play uh, mandatory uh, number of overs as the mandatory power play is uh, five overs seven overs need to come in in those 18 overs that's so that's the 40 percent that we are talking about now sujarai gets on target but kavya reverses it towards a uh, short third gets a single Suja Roy now, now gets one on target. Three wides already in this over. Now she has to deal with Varsha, the skipper of Karnataka. Very rarely that I have seen uh, a B1 player being a skipper. So that shows what Varsha can bring to the table. As Netra, the coach of Karnataka, has uh, entrusted her uh, abilities. Varsha. Can she strike? Yes, she does. Through the covers, a straight to the covers, probably. One from the bat. So that means two runs on the board because it was Varsha. Varsha immediately, she's come in and she's moved to 10 already of three deliveries. A B1 batter. Now Kavya on strike. 27 for her out of 17 deliveries. And whatever Astami is doing, she's going to the leg side. And, and that's why, look at that, once again, this time luckily on the off peg, oh, Pratima goes, slight bit of misfield, but only one, only one. So how much does the West Bengal team want to chase? Because the projected currently looks at 242, because they're scoring at 14 runs per over. There's Karnataka. They want to bring it down. They really want to bring it down here, West Bengal, the girls in red. On target, Varsha, yes, she strikes towards a deep square leg. Once again, couple more as the batters run through. So that's four runs on the board. Right, this is the advantage. And that's why she's been the skipper is Varsha. Every single time, if the B1 batter scores off the bat, it's going to be a couple of runs. And Pratima Ghosh, how much of pressure she has been undergoing. Because she has to peg back this Indian scoring. They did well with the wicket of Gangamma, but after that, it's no looking back. The skipper has come in and she scored at free will. Does well, does well, Sujaroy, comparatively a better bowler, but then uh, swivels it at two deep backward square. Will that be a boundary? Will that be eight runs on the board? Yes, it is. That's Varsha's eight runs. Wow. Deep backward square. What a timing. Varsha, fabulous way to make sure the scoring keeps up its momentum. And the fielder in the deep could not stop it. So eight runs on the board, costly over. This for West Bengal once again. Varsha will be a mighty happy batter. And she was happy as a skipper. Now with her own effort with 22 out of just five deliveries. She would be mighty happy. Last delivery of uh, Suja Roy's over coming in. Very costly over. 19 runs already being given away. And will that be a wider down the leg side? Yes, it will be. Yes, it will be. So make that 20. With still a delivery to go. And Varsha has got this technique of changing her uh, bottom hand into the last minute. Changing in the way that uh, she actually gives it a big thump. When she goes uh, for those behind the stumps or behind the square shots. And she makes sure that, she, that the ball is more finer than squarer for the fielders. And that makes it even more difficult. Watch that. There. Once again. Towards uh, the end of her shot, she actually gives it a thump on that bottom hand. And she'll keep strike. She'll keep strike. A couple of more runs on the board. And after six overs, it's 89 for one. 22 run over there by Suja Roy. That's a big one. How will West Bengal come back in Indus in Bank Women's National T20 Tournament organized by Cavi under Samarthanam and make sure Mr. Uh, GK, Dr. Mahantesh, the president of Cavi, has put out all the things that's possible to make this women's national tournament get underway because this is the tournament 
that we will be uh, watching at the end that's the uh, 13th is the finale as uh, we will be probably having a clear idea of who will be making it to the indian national team from this tournament as sangeeta mehta comes on and she is uh, a b2 bowler sangeeta mehta and she's a b2 bowler who can see for 2 meters after 6 overs it's 89 for 1 with varsha on strike now sangeeta she's got a deep square leg the ball exactly travels there exactly travels there but that goes at backward square leg will that be another boundary yes it is another eight runs for varsha good effort there and as i keep saying with varsha shots she gives it a whip towards the end of uh, those shots she gives it a whip on the bottom hand which takes the ball more finer than the players it there was a deep backward square leg sanam mahali the vice captain of west bengal was there but then the ball because of varsha's whip on the bottom hand took the ball more finer and uh, sanam did not stop it and varsha is blazed past kavya look at that seven deliveries for 32 couple of boundaries that means couple of eight runners for varsha and that's the reason she is there at number 3 very very strong batter goes down once again gives it a whip towards and now a field placement is good as sanam the vice keeper she goes at deep backward square leg instead of deep square leg she understood varsha's uh, tactics yeah that is what there is uh, a short deep backward square and there's a finer deep backward so that means all those whip shots will probably be having some protection all that kavya has to do is just give a single and that's what she does brilliantly this one goes to a more conventional uh, square leg <laughs> all right 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 over throws and being lethargic on the field and uh, getting out another single so that means uh, the overall score goes on to pass off the 100 that's two runs more on the board right now that's a very strong shot but there is protection sanam comes across the returns have not been so strong from the west bengal players from the deep Hundred on the board. Hundred on the board here for Karnataka. Hundred and two for one in the seventh over. Varsha once again whips it. Goes exactly at that position. Now Sanam. even though she was there at the right place miss field allows couple so that's four runs on the board because it was of varsha's bat it's nice to see west bengal have actually gauged and guessed what uh, varsha is trying to do it's really good uh, cricketing brains by west bengal girls that's shown they have packed that uh, behind square with a lot of protection especially for varsha you can see a shortish backward square then a deep backward square just behind the shortish and then there is a deep square leg where the ball travels right now towards mid wicket yeah another couple of runs and varsha also realizing that there is protection behind she plays the shot a little more earlier meets the ball much closer much earlier and then puts it to deep mid wicket for another couple of runs and that's uh, i think end of the 7th 110 for one after seven overs and still a long long way to go for the west in for the west bengal uh, players
saying, was that out, umpire? But uh, Hari says, no, girls, carry on. The batter was well in. Yeah, once again, reverse. There is protection. And it's going to be just a single at uh, deep third. Now bring on the skipper. 44, she is on. Can she make it in this over? Can she be the fastest 50 scorer? Can that happen? 12 ball 50. Or rather, even 13 ball 50 is what I'm expecting. Nobody scored 13 ball 50 in the women's edition. Can she be the first one? Whips past. Couple more runs for her. Moves on to 46 now of 12. And I remember the Indian batters at T20 World Cup finale. Sunil was the one who was blazing through with that fastest 50. He scored it in. He scored it in, uh, I think, 16 deliveries. Sunil, his 50. But Varsha can beat the record. But now it's going to be uh, Kavya on strike. Mehek has done well. She's done well. She's been on target, even though that's a single that goes down towards deep square leg. What I'm happy to watch is Mehek being on target, even though it was uh, most of the deliveries going down the leg side. She's on target. Now, Watch has got the opportunity to make it 50. Varsha gets it past the short square leg fielder and even past the uh, deep square leg. Couple more for her. Moves on to now what? 50, I think. Couple. So that means four runs. Yeah, there we go. 50. 50 for the Karnataka captain. Varsha, out of this, 13 deliveries. She scored a half century. Currently, the fastest women, fastest women batter to score uh, the fastest 50. What a record she set. After eight overs, 122 for one. And after the ninth over, we will probably have a short drinks break. 122 for one. And Varsha scored 50 out of just 13 deliveries. What a start this has been for Karnataka. I think it's... One twenty-two for one after the eight overs. Once again, goes towards uh, Deep Square Leg. Well fielded. Really good stop there by Sanam. Does well. One twenty-three for one. And just before this over, we saw Varsha scoring the fastest 50 at Indus in Bank Women's National T20 Tournament. What a benchmark she's set. Now, can Suja Roy break this jinx of not being a wicket-taking bowler and get it out? That's a nice one. That's a nice one. Varsha does not pick. If there was uh, some room that was being provided down the leg side, but Varsha just didn't pick it. Probably still back of the mind celebrating the 50. And she has to regroup. She has to rethink now. That's a first dot ball for Varsha. Can you believe it? That's the first dot ball. 14th one. Look at that. Behind the stumps. That's behind square. Look at that protection. There is a, a shortish, shortest deep backward square. And then there is a, the classic 
the backward square, the more uh, orthodox one. And Varsha plays it early, puts it towards deep mid wicket, front of square. Fumble by a B1 uh, fielder. And a couple more runs on the no ball, is it? Yes, it is going to be a couple more runs. So that's uh, Purnima Mahoto at uh, short mid wicket. So no ball plus two. So that's actually meaning five runs. Yeah. Five on the board, four for Varsha. Just there was a couple of uh, runs that's been uh, stolen off. And the running between the wickets. Now, how can I forget Gangamma? She's batted well. She's run for Varsha. She's run for Varsha for what? 15 deliveries. I should be saying 54 runs. Because Varsha has also scored uh, a few boundaries from her bat. So, every job and every responsibility being uh, shared equally. Responsibilities uh, being shared, that means it's a good sign for a team coordination. Now, Varsha, can she make sure that she's put out a very, very good platform? for Karnataka before the drinks break. That's way down the leg side. They'll have to uh, re that one, Sujaroy. So much work for Pratima Ghosh. Why not? Yeah, she has to guide uh, her B1 bowlers and Pratima will be really breathing a sigh the moment where the B1 bowlers have finished the quota of Savinovas because only that will probably... Uh, come into good advantage for West Bengal because then she can bring on her uh, B2 and B3 bowlers as soon as possible. Once again, struck well, struck well towards the deep. Good stop by Pratima herself but cannot stop the uh, two runs. Now that's been the issue for West Bengal girls. They, uh, they've made sure they've stopped the ball well, but they haven't returned very correctly to the uh, bowler or the keeper end. Now, is it is it Gangamma who's made that error while running? Yeah, it has to be because one shot was called by uh, Anish, so that only makes two runs instead of four because it was coming off Varsha's bat. Comparatively, a quite over by Sujar Roy. I say comparatively because we've seen 22, 26 uh, runs scored off in one over. Varsha once again hits it in front of square. If uh, you have strategies against me, I'll probably bring out another strategy is what Varsha is saying. In the initial phase of uh, her innings, she made sure she's giving that whip and going behind square. Now she's meeting the ball very early, probably not using the bottom hand too much. Probably in the uh, top of the hand grip is coming into play. And she's meeting the ball early and towards in mid wicket. That's so that's front of square. She's uh, placing the balls. And once again, she's got a couple of runs for herself. Now forget 200. Will Varsha be reaching a century? That looks like more likely. Now she gives a whip behind the stumps. But there is protection. Sanam Mahali, she knows, she knows Varsha's uh, scoring area is behind square. Behind uh, square, actually, very, very clearly at uh, short fine, deep fine, deep backward square. Those are the areas where Varsha has uh, been feasting today. Now rather, she's been fed today, I should say, by the uh, West Bengal bowlers. And she's uh, punished all the bad deliveries. Now, Kavya has slowly moved on to 36. And uh, she's not even been noticed. After nine overs, it's 138 for one. And we will uh, have the drinks break.
After nine overs, it's 138 for one and probably... Uh, After nine overs, 138 for one. Welcome back after a short little break. Now, can this break be a blessing in disguise? As uh, Sanam Mahali, the vice captain, comes into the attack. Sanam Mahali, B3 bowler. Now, now, somewhere uh, the West Bengal girls will be breathing a sigh of relief. And probably, I feel they've completed the seven overs or probably uh, one or two overs pending of the B1 bowler.
Sana Mahali around the stumps for another angle. Goes down the leg side. Pratima Ghosh cuts it off. Deep back with square leg. Oh, single now. Uh, that's a good resumption from the Karnataka players because after a drinks break, generally there is a little bit of a lapse in concentration. There's a little bit of adrenaline low that happens. And they have to regroup it back. And Varsha did well. Puts the skipper. Varsha. Once again plays it much, much quicker in front of square. So I was just thinking how many overs as the B1 bowlers have bowled for West Bengal. So that is Mahek Lakra is bowled two. And uh, Suja Roy, she's bowled two. And that's it. So still three overs pending of the B1 bowlers. We'll have to see how the West Bengal uh, girls will plan that out. As Varsha with another couple puts four runs on the board for herself. So only four overs been bowled by the B1 bowlers. Where will Pratima Ghosh slot the remaining three overs of the B1 bowlers? That's really important and Varsha will be eyeing that for sure. Huge appeal, huge appeal but going down the leg side. Now Varsha has to come back into that concentration mode once again. 66 for her of 20 but this drinks break she has to regroup that one and also remember Varsha has been always before this has been challenged by B1 bowlers and now there we go dot ball dot ball stumping appeal behind the stumps and Varsha is well in so there's a lot of noise around Varsha now there's a lot of players converging inside because it is a, a B3 bowler Sanam who's a vice skipper as well so Varsha under pressure two consecutive dot balls can she regroup this one with the thoughts she does she does but cannot go past short mid wicket couple of runs on the board yeah, there's a different energy that's been coming in from the uh, West Bengal bowlers and fielders because Sanam has done well. Reverse this time into the gap towards uh, third man. What a good stop. That's a really good stop by uh, Sangeeta Mehta. She's a B2 fielder and she had to uh, gauge it towards her left arm, probably a weaker side and she's uh, stopped it really well. That's the end of the over. After 10, 147 for 1. Now, there's so much happening in, in the uh, square, actually, because they need a breakthrough. And West Bengal girls are trying to uh, confuse the three Karnataka players there with a lot of chirping, with a lot of noise. All Varsha has to do is probably just uh, keep on going with the way she's done. She's not been confident enough after the drinks break because she's been put under pressure by three uh, dot deliveries in the previous over. As Katrina Kujur comes back. She's a B1 bowler for her first over. Katrina Kujur. And we saw what happened in the previous over. Eight runs came off it. So good start by West Bengal. Because currently Karnataka is scoring at 15 runs per over. If you're giving 8 runs per over, so that is called a good comeback. And especially after drinks break. Now when the scoring goes down, so much uh, things happen. We have seen in the game of cricket. 
The batter tries a different shot. The fielder comes in. There's suddenly a run out. And that's a very, very wide delivery. Not a good start. Not a good start by Katrina Kujur. Remember, the B1 bowlers have to support Pratima Ghosh. They have to support their skipper. As Pratima has done really well. Look at that. Once again, straight on the wicket. She goes and she guides her boy B1 bowler because the vision is a, a nil vision for B1 players. And now gauges it well. Varsha waits for it. Waits for it. Gets it. And goes past the shortish square leg fielder for another couple. So one from Varsha's bat means couple. In the 11th over, Karnataka have reached 150. So it's 150, one for one on the board already. So after this, there are uh, seven more overs to go. Katrina Kujur, yeah, as I said, the B1 bowlers have to support their skipper. Now Kavya puts it to deep uh, mid-wicket. Gets another couple. Another single there. So after this, two more overs of B1 bowlers. Now, now uh, Astami Mahato behind the stumps has gone to the middle stump and guiding uh, her B1 bowlers. Astami herself, a B3 fielder, she's got a better vision comparatively. So she has to just go towards the off stump. There, there. Instead of the middle stump, she has to just go towards the off stump of the batter and guide her uh, bowlers. Now that works. That really works. And there has been rarely any dot deliveries. Another B1 fielder, Purnima Mahato, cannot stop it. Two more, so that means four runs again for Varsha. 74 of just 24 deliveries. We've already got the fastest 50 that was being scored. 13 ball 50 for Varsha in this Indus in Bank Women's National T20 tournament organized by Cabby under Samarthanam. Oh, that's a record. That's a record. Now all the girls have to beat in this uh, women's nationals. Can she be that first girl? Can she be the first batter to reach uh, the triple figure mark? And imagine what boost and what message that will probably give out to other teams when they are playing Karnataka. Oh, oh, oh! She wanted to try the second time. <laughs> Varsha. That would have just gone behind the stumps into the hands of uh, Astami if you had wanting to hit for the second time. She missed out on the first and she immediately wanted to course correct and wanting to hit the ball on the second occasion, Varsha, but a dot ball nevertheless. Happy result for West Bengal girls. Wanting to go the reverse way, doesn't connect, but a wide delivery nevertheless. She had so much time. She had so much time that she could play two shots in one go. Is Varsha. And she didn't connect. The ball was way down the offside. Katrina now with a very, very strong onside field. Uh, beats Varsha. Appeals Pratima Ghosh with a huge one. That no 
says Anish. Let's watch that, what happens there. Varsha was trying to actually lift her legs, but no, back foot firmly in. Again, again, Astami goes towards the leg side and claps. There, there, that's kind of an issue there for the B1 bowlers because they might be feeling the line of the ball. There, it goes towards the leg side. Small little correction that's needed. The think tank of West Bengal, they have to go back and uh, work on this for Astami. After 11, 159 for one. And we are left with seven overs to go. And at the current rate, they've been scoring 200, yes, is a very sure short one. And it's uh, time, I think, for Pratima to come back into the attack. She has to understand. She cannot take this deep down. Look at this, Ganga scoring 22 only of 14. She was very strong, but then when uh, Mahek Lakra got her cleaned up, it is all Varsha show. 27 deliveries, 76. Wow. What a strike rate for the Karnataka skipper. Kavya, well supporting and playing the sheet ankle role. And still Gangamma, after her contribution, she's still running for Varsha. As the pick of the bowlers, if you really have to search, is Sanam Mahali. She's been the most economical one. After that, everybody has gone for runs. And only Mahek Lakra with a couple of overs, 26, and picking up Gangamma's wicket. Probably the second best. And apart from that, Jacinta Topo. Yeah, probably she'll be saved for the death overs. And uh, as we were expecting, the two more overs of B1. Now, who's into the attack? Number 13, that's Nasira Khatun. B3 bowler. That's something to breathe for, for the West Bengal women. As uh, Nasir, Nasira comes on into the attack for the first time in this match. So, B3 bowler will probably have some uh, advantage. And this is the first time, remember, a B3 bowler is bowling towards uh, Varsha after the vice captain. Oh, still off. Time. Good stop. Very good stop behind the stumps by Astami. Uh, almost stopping two runs. So means she stopped four. What will be the second ball? Again. Again a dot ball. Straight back to the bowler. Nasira starts well. But it's uh, a no ball there. Now, because of the fielding restrictions, ah, this is what I was mentioning. There, one fielder standing straight behind the umpire. And Hari says it's a no ball. I would probably say, eh, just pardon the kids, just pardon the girls for West Bengal for once. Probably the B1 fielder coming behind the uh, square leg umpire. But no, come on, this is uh, high intensity cricket we are playing. This is at its national level best. You cannot be bending rules, says Hari and uh, Anish. They stick to the decision. So the only no ball, and then Nasira lost a line in the next one, the wide one. Now Varsha does not connect. It's been put under pressure. I mentioned this before this over started. B3 bowler after Sanam. It's Nasira who is challenging Varsha. And Varsha is having some troubles. Now, can she connect this one? Yes, she does. But straight to the fielder. B1 fielder fumbles. Well backed up by Sangeeta Mehta. At uh, a shortish fine leg. Pratima Ghosh will be happy with that effort. She herself standing at uh, mid-off. Once again, reverses into the gap. Vacant uh, spaces are third man region. And the ball will just stop behind the boundary. But we'll have to check. We'll have to check if the uh, fielder picked up the ball 
by keeping her leg from outside the boundary line. That's what happened, I think. That's a very good stop. She ran a long distance, Jacinta Topo. But the moment she picked up the ball, there, 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 there. Ah, her leg was outside the boundary ropes and picking up the ball. And probably boundary will what we decided. And the on-field umpire is probably uh, not going the video referral way and uh, giving only uh, two runs. Nevertheless, nevertheless, some luck going towards the West Bengal girls. That's what it has to be considered as. Now, Varsha. She's batting on uh, 78. Very good over by Nasira. Finishes the last one with a dot ball. Just 4-5. Uh, and uh, a couple of extras. So just a seven run over. Probably one of the best. The most economical over by Nasira. She has to bowl more. After 12 overs, 166 for one. Jacinta Topo has done well for just giving away 11 runs from her first. And probably uh, the way forward for Pratima Ghosh, the skipper of West Bengal, should be that you will be uh, wanting to bowl Nasira more. Keep her to the death. That's what the plan will be. Giving away seven runs, especially against Varsha. Wow, that's an achievement. Mehek Lakra comes in. I think the last second over from a B1 bowler. So after this, there will be one more over by a B1 bowler. So two overs of B1 bowlers still pending for Karnataka. So 12 uh, deliveries to score, most runs off. If you only look at the B1 uh, bowlers, because the B3 bowlers have troubled Varsha, so no doubt. And now Kavya. She's been quiet. She's playing the street anchor role to perfection. Can she also sh change gears? Can she also make sure, because Varsha is struggling, can she make uh, some men's for the lost deliveries as Mehak Lakra starts off with the wide? As I was mentioning, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh and West Bengal also in the same group as Karnataka in Group A. Strikes well. Kavya towards uh, square leg. That's all they will be really happy for Karnataka because it's Varsha now back on strike and against the B1 bowler. Now, that's what they want. Put Varsha more against the B1 bowlers because she scored well against them. It would be a nice little uh, data that would be interesting to watch is how many runs is Varsha scored of the B1 bowlers only. So if you look at that, I think 98% runs probably has been coming in from the B1 bowlers. Was Varsha ready? Was Varsha ready? No, she was not. She was not. That's what I guessed. <laughs> and the ball hitting the stumps. Anish saying no. There, she was still marking a guard. She was still taking guard. And somewhere, the bowler thought she was ready. And Varsha was not. Uh, good call. Good call by Anish. Now Varsha is ready. Now Mehe, can she repeat? No. She should have just repeated what she, what she did in the previous delivery. Not firing down, way down the leg side. 
Now Pratima Ghosh once again claps and guides Mehek. Mehek actually hit the middle of the middle stump when Varsha wasn't ready. Just she just wants to repeat it. Not fires it down. Will Varsha connect it? No, she does not. Oh, she's done in for the pace. She played the shot too early. Varsha. Now, how much of a drinks break can bring uh, your change in momentum? And after the drinks break, Varsha has not been scoring freely. 33 deliveries for 78, but she was more freely scoring before the drinks break. That's what I feel. Straight to the fielder. That uh, fine leg. Short fine. Exact fielders at the exact place for Varsha. Pratima Ghosh thought well. Look at this. Even the whip from the bottom hand does not get gets Sanam past. Just keeps the batters down to one. Couple of runs, nevertheless. Because it was Varsha. Now Kavya. Connects. Hits hard. Good stop. Very good stop. Even though it was a half stop by Suja Roy. She's a B1 fielder, remember. But she stopped at least a couple. She was in the way of the uh, fiery shot that was being played by Kavya. It would have hurt. It would have hurt her uh, palms and fingers. And that's what you're made of, isn't it? You're playing for your state. You're aspiring to play for your country. This is what it is. And what an innovation. What a big opportunity being provided by Kabi and Samarthanam here in the Indus End Women's National T20 Tournament. And once again, huge thanks to Indus End Bank was what been mentioned by uh, David, the secretary of Kabi. Now, 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 quick single stolen. Straight to the fielder. Gangama, if she's not tired, she's run well. She's run for 30. 35 deliveries for Varsha and she's also batted for her opening stint remember she was there for 20 deliveries and if Gangama was not tired Karnataka will want to keep on going and we will want Netra the coach also to probably have a word there with, uh, with Gangama once again whips it past backward square leg single only Once again, once again, fielding restrictions. Fielders can't be standing behind each other. And that's what Pratima Ghosh is explaining to her uh, fielders. You need to understand they have to be positioned in the right way. Now I guess the fielders have been informed about their wrongdoings. A couple of times the no ball has been given because uh, they were standing one behind each other. There's a lot of talking also by the three Karnataka players of where the fielders are. They're uh, telling Varsha there's a lot of protection behind square. You'll have to play in front. Oh, that's a wide delivery. Maha Klakra, she's been costly. She is uh, given away 37 runs in her third over. She's picked up Gangamma all right. And that's a nice one. That's a nice one by Pratima Go. She's more towards the middle stump this time. Guiding Mahek. No. Once again going down the leg side. Varsha searches for it. And Pratima, yeah, she knows. She knows it's going to be the last delivery that's going to come up. You'll have to understand. You'll have to do a better job than that.
Can she finish this? Yes, she does. Connects, Varsha. And straight to the fielder. And even then, they steal a single. Straight to that fielder. A catching position, short leg. And stole that single. So, a couple of runs on the board. Varsha will keep strike after 13. 180 for two. Five more over spending. And one over of a B1 bowler. How important is that one over? And probably, I think, Suja Roy will come in and finish. And for me, they have to finish this. In this over itself. 56 ball. 126 is the partnership. Wow, look at this. 100 run partnership with 126. And the contribution is the skipper. With 84 of 36 deliveries. And... Uh, 22 only by 20 by Kavya. So that means she's been running. <laughs> now, Nasira. Nasira comes in. She's just given away, what, seven runs in her first. Probably we would have wanted to bowl uh, her the 14th, then the 16th. But uh, Pratima has brought her on. So the death over will again be a question. And Pratima Ghosh, the skippers brought her on only because Varsha is there in the middle. I would have wanted Nasira to bowl uh, the 15th and the 17th, not the 14th. That's how ideally you would have wanted your uh, bowler who's shown a lot of confidence to bowl in the death over. Uh, somewhere, somewhere Pratima missing out a trick. Probably a uh, uh, some calculation error maybe she this is the 14th we just wanted Nasira to bowl the 15th and the 17th that would have been ideal for West Bengal penultimate over being bowled by uh, one of the stronger B3 bowlers another couple of runs on the board guided very nicely at uh, a deep fine leg Reverses it. Kavya. Uh, Eruduba. Eruduba is the call. That means 2-2-2 two, two, two for the call. Uh, the Karnataka girls. We can hear them. Oh, that's going to be Muru. Not Eredu. So that means three runs. Oh, 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 the return once again is an issue. But the West Bengal uh, fielders. So the return has to be strong enough by the fielders, especially the deep fielders. And especially when uh, Gangama is running so well, her only job now is to put uh, Kavya back on strike. And Gangama is running helter-skelters just to make sure she's running to the danger end every single time. Still, oh, dot ball. He wanted to hit that very strong and hard Varsha. Missing out because there was more power than timing. Now, can she time it? Does, does well, but in front of square. Towards deep mid wicket. So, after 14, it's 191 for one. Once again, a very tidy over by Nasira. She's finished the 14th and she's just got one over pending for herself. She's bowled two overs. So just an or another over. You would have wanted Nasira to bowl the 19th, rather the uh, 18th over or the 17th maybe. Because it's an 18 over game, you would have wanted her to bowl the uh, 17th over. Because that would have been ideal for West Bengal. Nevertheless, after 14, it's 191 for one. Partnership is marvelous. Out of 62 deliveries, 137 is the partnership. 
And if you look at the bowlers, who probably have been taken a lot of beating. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bowlers being used by Pratima Ghosh. And B1 bowler have just another over to go. Six overs being bowled by the B1 bowler. So that's Mehak Lakra finishing her spell with three for 40. And uh, Suja Roy, two overs. So that makes it five. And uh, another over being pending here. And another B1 bowler comes in, Katrina. So six overs of B1 bowlers has come in. Gangama has run well. Now, you have to understand, Gangama, she batted well and to run for Varsha for 36 deliveries, 39 deliveries, and that is some doing. Now, Katrina Kujur, can she keep it within herself? She's done well. She's given away 12 runs in her first. She's come back for her second. Way down. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Outside the off stump. Lot of room provided. Lot of width. Has to re-bowl that one. Not a good beginning. In the 15th over. Astami is just once again making that error of going down the leg side and clapping and guiding her bowlers. Varsha, oh, straight to the fielder. Can this be an honor? No, it is not. B1 fielder Purnima Mahato cannot uh, collect and return it neatly. Even though the ball has been hit directly to the fielder, straight to the fielders, the Karnataka runners, especially uh, Gangamma, she's been very, very uh, evident. In making sure she steals everything that's coming off Varsha's bat. And Kavya. Just a bit of a confirmation there. Kavya generally on 44. We will get that scoring uh, correction done. She's currently on 44 of 37. So she's done well. Six more for her 50. But look at this. Varsha on 90. Out of 40 deliveries. He's got a lot of time to reach that uh, triple century, right? Triple figure mark correction, but they'll have to target her stumps. They'll have to target her stumps more often. Another extra. Uh, the projection looks scary. That's the word I can relate to. Uh, it's crossing 250 at the moment. 250 is a big, big total in 18 overs for West Bengal uh, women to get it. Waits, waits for that delivery and then Swivels gives a little bit of a whip behind the stumps. And Sanam comes in very quickly. Return once again is an issue. And Gangamma comes back for a second run. So that's four runs on the board. In the 15th over already and Karnataka have reached 200. Wow. In the 15th over, Karnataka have reached 200 for one. What an effort this is by the girls in blue. Varsha, the skipper, currently on 94. Kavya, yet to reach her 50. And there's a substitute uh, runner will be coming in. Kavya is going off. She's limping off. Kavya is limping off. Physio has been called in. A good hand. Very, very good hand by Kavya. 44 for her of 37 deliveries. She's done well. Would have been happy seeing a reach of 50. Uh, some uh, changes in the scoring. There error on the initial part. We will uh, correct ourselves. 
but now who's going in is Deepika. Deepika goes in B3 batter. Wide, wide outside the off stump. How many times we've seen uh, any batter getting in those uh, scary moments, a little bit of uh, nervy uh, moments, when you call it the nervous 90s, but Varsha probably will not be faced with the situation. She knows she's done well. 41 ball, 94. He's not eyeing for that uh, triple number mark yet. He just wants the team to be on top. Once again, an extra. Katrina Kujur. West Bengal B1 bowlers have trouble. Pratima Ghosh, the skipper. There, there. She's still not happy. She's still not happy also with uh, Astami behind the stumps. You just need to guide. Yeah, yeah, there, there. That is what I've been talking about the whole innings. Pratima, go. Uh, now Astami comes outside the off stump and claps. This is what was needed. This is what was needed from the beginning. And the B1 bowlers need to uh, actually follow the sound of the clapping from Astami behind the stumps. And Pratima herself goes in. Yeah, now both Pratima and Astami. Yeah, there, there, there. Pratima herself goes behind the stumps. Pratima herself behind the stumps. She's not happy with Astami's uh, efforts behind the stumps. Once again, now they want the line to be on the stumps. And there, Astami still indicates to Pratima, listen, Captain, I've been doing my job. Ask your B1 bowlers to uh, be on target. That is what was the reaction from Astami behind the stumps number nine. Yeah, you have to give it to her, isn't it? But uh, working overtime is Pratima Ghosh, the captain. Katrina, can this be a legal one? Yes, it is. Connected well, but there is protection. Sanam comes in. A deep backward square leg. Varsha moves on to 96, a hit away from the first centurion at Indus Ind Bank Women's National T20 Cricket Tournament for the blind. What a way to put a message out there for all the other teams. Watch out. The girls in blue, Karnataka girls, they've got a captain. The B1 ball. At mid on. And all they have to do is keep on scoring the West Bengal girls because this is a mammoth score. Oh, straight, but slight bit of a fumble at uh, short square leg. Allows the batters the run. And after two, 13 for no loss. As uh, Sanam, the vice captain, is there alongside with uh, Pratima Ghosh, who's running in for uh, the B1 batter. That Jacinta Topo, Pratima Ghosh is running for Jacinta Topo. Decent start after a couple of overs. 13 for no loss. But what we'll be really interested is again to watch the batting card of the Karnataka team. The reason why we will have to look at this is because Kavya did not reach a 50. Has been disappointed. But look at that 118. Out of 53 deliveries. Back live and there. Right getting it on time. And gone. What a breakthrough. Bold. Completely missing it out. Straight dish delivery for Sanam. And Gangamma strikes. And she struck gold for Karnataka. Straight ball. Completely beaten. All ends up. Once again. Goes to make room that time. Once again, as Sanam, she's been doing this in her innings. Makes room. Gangama with a sure pace. Strikes. And uh, disappointedly goes back. Is uh, the batter. 
Have a look at that once again. It's all sheer pace. Nothing could have gone wrong. Pace, you miss, I hit. That's it. Simple cricketing uh, sense shown by Gangamma. He's got the first wicket for Karnataka. Meher Lakra, the B1 batter, comes out. Generally, you could have sent in a B3. Because any which way there was a B1 uh, batter who was batting. And Sanam, who just got out, he could have probably come in with B2 or even Pratima Ghosh could have batted. She's right there. And this is power play. Small little things makes big uh, difference in a game of cricket and especially in the power play and especially when you're chasing huge totals. See, when there was a B1 batter already, why send in another B1 batter? Kind of confusing because you only have to rotate the circle. Remember, B2, B3, B1. That's the, that's a circle. So if B1 batter is already there and Sanam, the B3 batter got out, you could have just simply replaced it with a B3 batter or even Pratima Ghosh could have played. LBW appeal, huge one. It's struck on the line, I guess. Yeah, this is. And it is gone. It looked plumb in front and Gangamma has struck once again. Mehar Lakra did not pick the straightish quicker delivery. And she has to go back. Back to back wickets. Plumb in front. Be not judged. LBW and Mehek Lakra has to go back. Watch this. Once again, that rhythm, what I was talking about from uh, Gangamma. Goes in. Straightish delivery. Quicker one. On the knees very quickly. Mehek Lakra. Yes, that's what you expect from a B1 batter. They go down quickly to uh, gauge the delivery. But no. Did not gauge it. And a wasted off uh, a number at number three by the West Bengal girls. Could have just gone in with a B3 batter. That's what I was mentioning. Now there is opportunity for a B3 batter to come in. B2, Sangeeta Mehta actually uh, is changing the gloves on. Sangeeta Mehta. Uh, somewhere, somewhere the uh, West Bengal girls need to uh, get it right. Wow, what a strike by Ganga Ma. She's on a hat-trick already in the third over. And after scoring uh, for herself, running for her skipper, she's come in. And she's been the most valuable player, no doubt. Now, to face the hat-trick delivery, pressure situation now for Sangeeta Mehta. But lucky that uh, she's got uh, her skipper Pratima Ghosh to support her in the centre. Somewhere this is breaking the momentum of the Karnataka girls and they're not happy. They do not look happy because on a hat-trick delivery you can't take out the momentum. But that's a good strategy by the batters. Come on, give it to them. That's okay. They can afford to do that. But break in momentum. Can Gangama take the hat trick? On a hat trick now. Oh, struck, but outside the leg stump. Outside the leg stump, is it? No, it's been given. It's been given out. That's a hat trick by Gangama. Wow, for the initial moment, it looked like as if it was going down the leg side. But Anish judging it, saying it is hitting leg stump. So I will not judge. It has the LBW and that's a hat-trick. Wow. The first game itself in the Indus in Bank Women's National T20 Tournament, we've seen a century and now we've seen a hat-trick by Gangama. Struck in front. And it was... Going down the leg side uh, in the first instance, but Anish felt that it was hitting leg stump. And probably... Are judging it as the LBW. Hat trick. Hat trick for Gangama. Unbelievable start by the Karnataka women team. Three wickets 
And we will have to go with uh, Anish's gut feeling on the ground. Probably unlucky there, Sangeeta Mehta. It looked like it was uh, hitting down the leg. As Nasira Katun comes in. And again, a huge appeal. Now he says no. Now he says no. Anish. <laughs> it's all happening. It's all happening because of Gangama's pace. And more importantly, the direction. The line has been impeccable. The batters have got no room to score any runs. Forget freeing the arms. Once again, stuck in line. Now says no. This, this looked mighty close. This was mighty close compared to Sangeeta Mathias' decision. Nasira now getting the benefit of the doubt by Nasir. This probably looked close. Uh, that's going down the leg side. Nasir will say, okay, overdone, not a problem, but no ball. Leg. Remember, not more than five fielders on the leg side. That's on the on, so you will have to make sure you have exact number of fielders and also in the power play, you have deep fine leg and deep square leg back. Everybody else is inside the circle. Short third, backward point, point, mid-off, covers. Ball exactly goes at short fine. They don't take a single because it's straight to short fine. End of a Herculean, heroic and a humongous over. Three wickets for Ganga Ma in that. 14 for three. And West Bengal are reeling. Yeah, they need a huge rocket boost now to get on with this. Wow, 118 uh, was being scored by Varsha. It looks like with the way uh, West Bengal girls have started, probably not even cross off uh, Usha, uh, Varsha's score. As uh, Deepika will continue the fourth over. What a deadly opening pair with the ball for Karnataka as well. In the air, but that's uh, fallen safe. No fielder there. A short square because there was a deep square leg. There was a short backward square leg, remember. It was uh, hit hard because that's the way they have to go now. It was hit hard, top edged. And they're falling very safe. In the air this time. And it's been taken. Caught and bowled. Now. Unbelievable scenes here. Karnataka. Are making sure that they finish the game very soon. Batter did not have any clue what happened. Once again off the top edge. Deepika strikes and says. Why just Gangamma? Give me some opportunity to score with the ball. Yeah, there you see. She's blowing her gloves. That means it's just fallen on top of the gloves there. Jacinta Topo. Yeah, this replay was much needed. There. T right of the bottom of the bat. Got under the ball too much and scooped it in the air. And very, very good catch by Deepika. Generally a B3 bowler. So she could sight the ball better. She could hear the ball better. Uh, how many of times you watch it, it'll be a real sight to watch. Because there, under the ball, she just scoops it down. Is Jacinta Topo did not get the elevation right, did not get the angle right to put the ball over the infield. And Deepika completes the process. 14 for 4. And you're uh, asking for inspiration for the Bengal girls to get things moving. Again, a B1 batter, Suja Roy comes in. Deepika. Now, can she do a Gangama? Can she uh, put out back to back wickets? Or will Suja Roy get things going for Bengal? Oh, she's on the knees already before the delivery is even bold. That's a wrong one. That's a wrong decision, but stuck on the pads. But no, says uh, Hari this time. On the other end, 
Hari comes in. Probably Deepika actually covered the angle for Hari. Look at this. Look at this. Hari was actually wanting to look at uh, another angle. Couldn't get it through. Uh, with the gloves, guys. With the gloves. Come on, girls. Give something for the women in red to score. And uh, the girls in blue are all over the place. They're putting pressure on the umpires and also on the batters. Oh. That is going down the leg side. Ah, could have hit it. Could have hit it. Suja Roy does not gauge it. Hari just been blinded or probably covered by the angle of uh, Deepika because Deepika was right in front of Hari. He could not sight the LBW decision. It looked very close from here. And Hari uh, giving the benefit of the doubt to the batter. The backward square leg goes straight. No, they don't steal a single. As the girls in blue, Karnataka girls are all over the uh, girls in red for Bengal. After four overs, 14 for four. Man, watch that. It, it looks like as if the power play is still there with one over to go. And I feel Varsha, the captain, will not take off this fielding restriction. She wants to attack. She wants to go with this flow. As she's brought in a B1 bowler. She's brought in Kavya into the attack. And it's nice to see the vice captain Sunita actually uh, calling the shots. Now, this is the first bowling change. This is the first uh, B1 bowler that's coming in. And look at this. The previous over has been a made in over. That was being bowled by Deepika. Wow, that's the first maiden. So we've seen everything. We've seen a century. We've seen a hat trick. We've seen a maiden. And this is a big message going out to the other teams from uh, the Karnataka girls. Mashi. Oh, right, right, right. Marginal on the line, but still called wide. Good pace by Kavya for a B1 bowler. And Nasira, who's just uh, had the rub of the green with the luck going her way for the LBW decision that wasn't being given, should convert this. Look at that for a pace for a B1 bowler. That's nice. That's really well timed as well. Using the pace of the bowler towards a deep backward square and fine leg. Those are the only two fielders outside. And I'm loving what Kavya is doing already for a B1 Bowler was completely uh, with zero blindness, zero vision. She's got good pace. And and the line, even with the pace, the direction, even that is spot on. Now, Suja Roy, she's got a challenge. It's going to come at good pace. Yes, there it is. Gets it off the bat, does not score a single... West Bengal has to understand that the B1 batters, they can make uh, things tougher for the uh, Karnataka team because whatever comes off their bat is going to be a couple of runs. So one means two, four means eight. So they can still fight back. It's not yet done for the girls in red. Of course, they've lost their uh, top order. Uh, that's a wide one. They'll have to re that again. Kavya. Uh, because she bowled it with a lesser pace. And that's the reason she uh, erred in line. Bowl with the normal pace. And this is nice to see from the vice captain, Sunita, guiding Kavya. Because uh, Varsha also is a B1 captain, remember. Again, for everybody who's been joining us, for this Indus in Bank uh, Women's National T20 Cricket Tournament. Let me remind you that we are looking out for uh, Team India at the finals. 13th is the uh, finale.
This has been uh, exclusively live on uh, Cabby's official uh, digital channel. Oh, that's gone! That's Kavya striking goal! And Suja Roy missed it completely. And Kavya does not realize it until Sunita comes and lifts her up. Suja played the shot very early. If you look at that replay once again, you will be able to find what went wrong. Suja played the shot very early, even before the ball came. And I was talking about Kavya having express pace. Probably Suja wanting for that there. She goes through with the shot early and then the ball arrives. Ah, oh, such a deceiving bowler is Kavya. She changed her pace. She made sure the change of pace really worked. Oh, very early through the shot. Yeah, probably uh, getting the booking for Kolkata Express even before reaching the railway station. That's what happened. I think this is the captain who is getting ready to come. He has to. She has to come in. Yeah, that's the skipper. Pratima Ghosh. And she's been assisted as well. Uh, the only uh, hope is what I feel. Now for uh, West Bengal, this Pratima Ghosh as she walks out with a huge uh, mountain to climb. It looked like as if uh, it was Kilimanjaro mountain before the start of the West Bengal innings. Now, yeah, it definitely looks like Mount Everest, no doubt. It's very tough. Still, no hope lost. Because you have the skipper in the middle. And the skipper for Karnataka scored a century. Can the skipper put a fight back? Pratima Ghosh. For West Bengal. Can she lead that fight back? Can she be that leader? There, first ball. Straight to covers. Doesn't get off the mark. And what a start. What a start for Karnataka women team. A great start, I should call it. Shivagangamma with the field in the covers. And Kavya has also struck well. Gangamma scored uh, a hat-trick with her uh, third dismissal being uh, kind of lucky. But then it will count as wickets as we go in with the uh, decision of the on-field umpires. And Kavya, she's come in as a B1 bowler. She's bowled uh, three wides, but she's picked up a wicket of Suja Roy as well. Now, all eyes on Pratima Ghosh for the West Indian team to, uh, correction, West Bengal team to make some fight back happening. Once again, straight and with good pace. Straight to uh, mid-wicket. And no run taken. Very good over by Kavya to finish the power play. 18 for 5. And this power play, no prizes for guessing. There's one more over that's coming up for the power play. But yeah, this looks like a complete dominance by Karnataka. No doubt. Just watch this bowling card. Gangamma. For her two overs, she's picked up three wickets and given away just six runs. Will uh, Deepika continue with her? If I was a skipper, yeah, I'd be tempted to continue with her. But uh, Sunita comes in. Probably Sunita will be uh, finishing her quota. Bowling on the trot. Yeah, Sunita. Uh, starts off with the wide. Starts off with the wide. They need more of those, the West Bengal girls, but they need runs from the bat as well. As uh, Nasira is there on one of five deliveries. Good pace. Good line. Very, very good line. Does not allow any room. Bowling uh, stump to stump, and especially targeting that middle stump is so important. And uh, when that sort of an attack comes in as a batter, you need to uh, have that reverse armory 
in the air will this be an easy one or oh, drop shot drops jay shot and deepika would have loved to go for it vice captain sunita correction she would have loved to go for the catch she tried it though and remember she's already got a, a dismissal in uh, that fashion when deepika was bowling but now not this time a good pace they're really having good pace the karnataka bowlers and uh, more importantly the line they've not erred too much they've made sure they stick on with the plan again just outside the off stump small room provided but straight to point look at that field short third backward point point it looks like uh, an attacking field and why not after sending half of the side back to the dugout varsha and sunita sunita the vice captain for karnataka and she is leading it from the front in the field and i think even there the responsibility has been divided with the bat varsha takes care of the responsibilities of the skipper and with the field with the ball it's sunita i think as a vice captain who comes in and look at that for a return strong return from the deep a deep square leg keep the batters down to just one the water on over as well two runs only from this sunita first over and now last ball of the power play gets it but uh, not beating the infield oh slight coordination error from the b1 fielder but that's okay it's still one run only so power play completely for uh, team karnataka the girls have done well 21 only they've given and they've sent out half of the side back to the dugout 21 for 5 after 6 overs and if you look at uh, the bowling uh, gangamma leading it from the front three wickets for her the first hat trick deepika did well now after the power play 21 for 5 west bengal they still need a lot of score 218 runs needed of 72 deliveries Kavya continues good strike by uh, Pratima Ghosh at backwards square leg for a single Renuka behind the stumps has not got so much job like uh, Astami the wicket keeper of uh, West Bengal because the B1 bowlers yeah that's their marking look at that when they actually have a, a feel of the stumps where the stumps is and then goes for the direction does well does really well once again renuka and actually you know what she's made uh, the umpire think about whether it was a wide or not anish and probably escapes with a, a dot delivery very good glove work behind by renuka very quick one connects b1 fielder does not get it but there is protection behind again stops well renuka generally a b2 keeper she's got good skills she's got good glove work kavya once again can she get another breakthrough can karnataka put some more pressure but pratima ghosh will want to score yes she does cannot beat the infield go straight to uh, the fielder on the on exactly towards mid wicket they've got a wideish mid on they've not got a straightish mid on because they know that uh, pratima and Nas nasira are trying to score on the on side just like that there exactly it goes to that squarish uh, mid on rather than a straightish one good thinking really good thinking by sunita the vice captain who's marshaling her resources on the field
only two runs from this over. Uh, make that three. Yeah, make that three with the ball to go. And every time you see there is an error that comes in from a B1 bowler, Sunita walks in. She actually tells uh, her bowler that, listen, this is the error that you've uh, been doing. Can you just correct that? Kavya, she's got the opportunity to correct it. She does. She does, but not too much. But she does fair enough. As there was a, a B1 fielder. That short square, but the deep square has got protection. After seven overs, 25 for five. There's not even a single boundary that's been scored. Uh, they need boundaries. Uh, I think train load. Truck load is also not enough. I think train load of trucks, of boundaries that's been needed for uh, the West Bengal girls. None of them have even crossed the double-figure mark. As Nasira and Pratima Goish are in the middle. This has been a dominating performance by the bowlers of Karnataka. Jacinta gone, Sanam gone, all for singles digit scores. Mehak and Sangeeta Mathia does not even disturb the scorings as well. Along with uh, Suja Roy who missed out. That slower delivery. Now, Sunita to continue the vice keeper. Ah, half stop. Oh, why are they not running? They're not running. They're not converting the ones into twos because Pratima goes says, okay, I will probably do the scoring. But come on, Pratima, you can't score. What? Still, you need uh, 214 runs. You need to rotate strike. 214 still needed. Sunita comes in. Nice high arm action. I think that's Varsha there. Down at... Uh, Shot backward square. B1 fielder generally after scoring 118. And as a skipper, I can afford to uh, properly take a break. But no, Varsha says, come on. I want to be there on the field for my team. Oh, does not strike it. Does not strike it at all, Nasira. I love the action of uh, Sunita because she has got that high run up she puts the ball high up in the air there there that gives her that initial airy movement and then comes down in the popping crease with a nice bit of a load and goes in with the right direction that's why she's been a pick of the bowler and she's just given away only four runs in the second over in her second over she's given away four and only one in this How long can uh, West Bengal wait for the fight back to come? Down the leg side, down the leg side. Have to re-bowl that again. And just talking about a little bit of a fight back, all you got to do is try and uh, keep rotating strike. That'll irritate the fielding side, any fielding side, even you've got 239 on the board. If there are runs coming thick and fast, you tend to feel that something's happening. You tend to feel that something's cooking. You tend to feel that, okay, uh oh, the batters are trying to take singles. Let us do something else. Bring in closer fielders. And then you get those boundary uh, odd balls. So you can make those changes come in and force changes need to come in. Varsha stops. Oh, wow. She can field as well. The skipper. Does well. B1 fielder. Generally, I uh, haven't seen most of the B1 fielders stop the ball so, so correctly. There, Varsha first lies down on the ground and then gauges the ball well, picks it up and returns. Uh, what a skipper. What a player. What a prodigy there. If you're looking at the uh, future Indian team. 15, 16 member squad will probably be picked out of these uh, 16 teams that's been participating in the Indus in Bank Women's National T20 tournament. End of 8th, 28 for 5. 
another B1 bowler comes in Shilpa into her first and see this is the hallmark of uh, good teams and especially even if you look at the, uh, the Indian men's team why they have won three consecutive T20 World Cups is because that uh, thinking cap that's been worn exactly when you have the ball in the hand you start with your B2, B3 bowlers you bring in your B1 bowler who's uh, with a little bit of uh, a hindrance in, in actually giving you the right direction with the ball and generally the B1 bowlers get picked by the batters so bring them in after the power play bring them in when there's a little bit of a lull period that is what the Indian men's uh, team does they do have uh, Sunil they do have Ready, the captain. They start the attack, and then the B1 bowlers come in to fill in that 40% of the quota. And 40% in 18 overs actually means seven overs. So in a 20-over game, probably will have to bowl or eight overs. And now, now Renuka has got the work to do. She is doing what uh, Astami did for West Bengal behind the stumps. She says, uh, listen, this is what you need to do. Here is where I'm standing. And can you hear it out to me? It's Renuka here and uh, goes back behind the stumps. This is good. This is very good. If you look at what Asmita did, she was standing on the leg stump and clapping for the B1 bowlers. And what Renuka does is she comes outside the off stump and she gives the direction for the B1 bowlers. Much needed. Much, much needed. Now, if you've been really a uh, little confused of who is Shika Shetty, Shika actually is the uh, coach of the Karnataka women's team. And look at this, where uh, you're actually having Shilpa bowl in the software uh, technology. You will need that perfect mobile number to uh, have your data will be sent to you. But since Shilpa is still yet to own one, Shika Shetty says, come on, put out mine and Shika come on this is not your data this is going to be <laughs> for Shilpa if she picks up a wicket she will happily give it away we I spoke to her before uh, the toss she was saying that the girls have practiced hard they've practiced well they're going to change it is it ah Sunita says enough 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 Sunita says enough is enough come back Shilpa I'll probably replace you I'll probably give you a ball later and that's what she's discussing with uh, Anish Anish says, how can you uh, take it off? Uh, there's a conference. There's a conference. Anish says, no, she has to continue. Yeah, she has to because apart from retired hurt, you cannot take off a batter or a bowler like that. And Sunita felt it's one of those uh, smaller games. But no, Sunita, come on. This is the Nationals. Is organized by Kabi under Samatanam. It's brought to you by Indusind Bank. There's all rules and regulations that has to be followed, and Sunita has not got her way. Shilpa has to continue. She's bowled four wides already. Pratima Ghosh will be happy. She's just standing there and getting runs for her team. Make that five wides. Oh! It's not going to go the right down way for the Karnataka girls. Five wides and again Sunita goes in. She says, okay, what can be done? They're all, they're all. See, I think a very simple thing to do is you just ask Sunita to go around the wicket and uh, actually stop putting a lot of pressure on the on the young minds of of Shilpa, I'll probably ask her to go around the stumps because she's got that wider angle. Because every time she she bowls, she's just firing it down the leg side. There's five wides on the trot. Make that six now. So you go around the stumps, 
and probably ask her to bowl towards the batter get those wide arm movement going and if you just bowl it towards the batter and that will be really helpful and luckily or unluckily the team can't listen to me <laughs> six wide so that's one extra over and renuka is standing way outside the off stump asking shilpa to bowl where she is yeah that, that, that's a good strategy that's a good strategy can shilpa listen to renuka and fire it down there and sunita also trying to help it out see they can afford to do this because gangama's hat trick is coming at the right time make that seven extras this is not what shika shetty wanted the coach and especially not against her name <laughs> oh it's all happening seven wides now uh, once again <laughs> i'll remind everybody watching that shika shetty's name is just put in for the records because shilpa has not got a number and the software for the scoring actually takes up the data pertaining to the number the mobile number uh, where shilpa has not got the mobile number she has not got the line right i'll be talking to anish and say okay fine you you we would have missed out your workout in the morning because of the early start now with five uh, wides got the arm stretched and now that's on target finally shilpa gets one on target and uh, nasira puts it across for a single that's quite like yeah that was his seventh delivery sunita wanted to uh, take her off the attack it was not allowed again 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 going down the leg side again anish gets the opportunity to widen his arms shika shetty will be not happy that's the ninth wide in the over i think anish uh, is sticking by the rules and west bengal will take it pratima goes says just stay just stay there the runs will keep coming very tough what is renuka asking the dug out she just says how can we get through this 10 wides and 11 runs only legal delivery has been bowled now renuka goes in she also helps uh, shilpa as she saying uh, in kannada probably they have been conversating ನೋಡಮ್ಮ ಲೆಗ್ ಸ್ಟಂಪ್ಗೆ ತುಂಬ ದೂರ ಎಸಿತಾ ಇದೆಯಾ ಈ ಕಡೆ ತಿರುಕೋ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟಂಪ್ಗೆ ಟಾರ್ಗೆಟ್ ಮಾಡು ಸೋ ಶುಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಮಾಡೀಗ ಮಾಡೀಗ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಯಾ ಕಮ್ ಆನ್ ಬೋಲ್ ನಾವು on target renuka strategy works going in and explaining in kannada actually has worked <laughs> right can shilpa get this through four more deliveries sunita says yes this is what we need yeah renuka still shouting from behind the stumps that's all that's all they'll have to do ah oh, misfield gangamma hat trick bowler come on shilpa will not be happy with that gangama when you bowl what is that hat trick and you need to support uh, the bowlers isn't it 
Yeah, especially for a bowler who's bowled 10 wides. Oh, stand and deliver. Now Gangama comes in the middle of the ball and the boundary. A deep mid wicket. Ah, Burley, Burley, Hange, Burley. You can hear that sound. That means, come on, keep it going. Again, room provided behind the stamps. Can that be runs? Only single. Should be satisfied with that. Only West Bengal girls. And even with a 10 wide over, the required rate haven't... Uh, hasn't even seen down forget coming down it hasn't even had uh, the nose looking uh, towards the the south pratima ghosh will not take a single finally shilpa is over comes to an end after nine overs 40 for five and we'll have a small little drinks break
this is uh, the resumption by kavya now can they wrap up that uh, remaining five wickets as pratima and nasira holding fort for uh, west bengal very very longish over by uh, shilpa kavya lakshmi is one and this is kavya nr has been playing kavya nr b3 bowler so she can see until 6 meters from her uh, eyelids the uh, angle from her eyelids to any object probably 6 meters that's the uh, category for b3 if we b2 it is 2 meters and uh, b1 is a uh, complete blindness scores first run in this over after the uh, drinks break for west bengal nasira this guides it towards uh, the backward square leg and gets that single i don't understand why the strikes been not rotated they they adding more pressure onto themselves when uh, the strikes don't get rotated again goes past varsha b1 uh, fielder short square but there is protection behind no ball as well after the overs 44 for 5 and west bengal they will need uh, still more 195 runs and i will say they still need at least 100 to put a fight back see because what happens is if they go down in this game with a huge margin the run rate comes into play the confidence of the west bengal team will be dented there's so much to think about see every victory will probably give you a lot of joy but a loss will give you lots to learn so what do you pick out of this learning curve is more important as once again a b1 bowler comes in kavya v this is so this three this two kavyas there kavya v and kavya nr kavya nr finished her over and now this is uh, kavya v starts off with a dot ball nasira probably expecting a wider delivery but no anish says uh, well, that's fine so i was just talking about what do you pick for west bengal out of this game is uh, probably you'll have to search because with the ball in the field they were not right and with the bat they're not able to uh, put bat on ball they're not able to convert the ones into twos they're not able to probably put the pressure on the uh, inner fielders so all this will be washed off if they try to put up a fight when the fight is on we we'll probably only speak about that fight that was being put out against this strong karnataka side i say strong is because they've given us everything they've given us a century they've given us a, a made in over in an 18 over game they've given us a hat trick by gangamma and also they've given a 12 wide over <laughs> 10 wide over which gave us 12 runs <laughs> they've got everything in the bag shilpa probably will have to go back and work on her skills in the nets probably she'll have to uh, just concentrate more on the sound that's been 
created by Renuka behind the stumps and follow her. That's a good ball by a B1 bowler. Varsha does well in the mid wicket region. Kavya, yeah, again, Shilpa and Kavya probably they'll have to talk more. And uh, Kavya can probably uh, handhold Shilpa what she does there. Look at her marking. Proper marking, proper way of gauging where the stumps is, where the batters will probably stand in. And fires it in with all pace. This time down the leg side, but still that shot fine. There's an opportunity. But Pratima scrambles through for a single. Forty-six for five. You do not want uh, the victory margin to be a bigger one because you will have to finish top on your table. Uh, wanting to do a football stop, no, does not stop it on that occasion. Deepika. Uh, because I say you need to finish top of your table is because the semi-finals will be top order of Group A versus top order of Group D. The semi-finals too will be top order of Group B versus top order of Group C. So that means four groups, only the top uh, four teams go through to play the knockout stages. Very simple, clean round robin uh, stature that's been put out. S another single in the deep. After 11 overs, 47 for 5. Captain Varsha comes into the attack after scoring uh, 118 with the bat. She comes in to uh, deliver the goods with the ball. Right, where is her target now? We see what she can do with the bat. Now can we also see what she can do with the ball? No, starts off with the wide. Her innings was well crafted and well molded. And again and again, I keep mentioning this. Gangamma ran for her. Remember? Gangamma ran all the 53 deliveries. The B1 bowler. Oh, there. Stop at point. Very nicely judged by Sujata. That is so, so difficult for a B1 fielder because it's complete uh, visual challenge that's come in because they cannot see. It's only on the sound of the ball that they'll have to gauge it and stop it. And Sujata did well. Renuka is guiding Varsha towards the right direction. I was wondering why Varsha did not start instead of Shilpa. Shilpa bowled that 10 wide over. Should have been Varsha there. Ah, she can bowl. What a prodigy. What a nice player to have. And especially in a B1 category. Generally, the B1 players uh, generally being looked at the opposition as uh, a player for target. There we go. There we go. Renuka actually from behind the stumps. She just guides her skipper of where the uh, target is and where the direction should be. Perfectly it goes there. Uh, on the other side. On the other side should have been there. Kavya, B1 fielder. And look at this. Generally, you do not have B1 fielders in front of the wicket. And Karnataka is not scared to do that. In mid-on, how many times uh, tell me there's a B1 fielder? But that shows the confidence level of the girls in blue. Varsha fires down the leg side. We'll have to re-bowl that. 
tend to happen by any B1 uh, bowler. Because generally when you uh, don't get the direction right and the line of the stumps right, zero visual uh, help. You could fire a few down the leg side, but Varsha comparatively is a better B1 uh, player than anybody that I've watched in the years. As I've seen this Indian team, the men's team, lift the T20 World Cup three times. Now, speaking about the, the women's national Indian team, we are here in the Indus Bank, Indus in Bank Women's National T20 Tournament and Varsha is impressed with the ball, with the bat. And that's why she's a skipper. And that's why Shikha Shetty has put so much trust on her, the coach. Ah, she has to stop this. She just has to stop this. And also, just because we still have a little... Netra, the coach, and Chika Shetty, yes, the manager of Karnataka women's uh, team. 50 on the board for West Bengal. That will give some boost. Swiveled it towards a deep square leg. It's a very good partnership comparatively because uh, West Bengal lost five wickets, but 50 on the board for West Bengal. That'll give some confidence and boost. 51 for five. Varsha finishes uh, her over after 12, 51 for 5. Kavya. Kavya V comes to her third over. Again, straight to point. No run taken again. Into her last over now, Kavya. Good B1 players in the Karnataka team that can make it to the Indian team. That's so important. Varsha, the skipper, Kavya. And yeah, do not forget Gangamma. She's a B2 blow bowler. She picked up a hat-trick. Today. So if you're looking at uh, the Indian men's side, there are five players from Karnataka in the uh, men's team. Ah, you will probably be seeing the same thing even uh, in the women's probably because the performance matters and performance has been seen by everybody. And they have lived up to that uh, expectations as well. What the men, Karnataka men's have set standards. The Karnataka women team as well. And what has mighty impressed uh, me is the B1 category bowlers. And batters. <laughs> Varsha. And she's got a nice little tune, Renuka, behind the stumps. Got that uh, you know, you know, sort of a tune that actually gives 
a very good indication, a clear indication to the B1 bowlers to where uh, the target should be. And this is a thumping performance. This is a conference stamping performance, I should say. We have put out a stamp on their name and said, okay, we are here. And the rest of the country, watch out for us, is what the Karnataka girls are telling us. Yeah, that's Renuka's sound. Yeah, yo, 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 that's what she says. I want to ask after the match what that exactly means. On target, on target. Look at that, Renuka from behind the stumps when she guides her bowler. How she does it so well. And Ashmita probably should learn from this. Ashmita, wicketkeeper for uh, West Bengal. Probably uh, more than clapping. This works. Let's listen to the Renuka. Yeah, there. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what she says. That's how it sounds to me from here in the commentary box. But I'll ask her the real meaning. Of course, after the match. End of the 13th. 54 for 5. 5 overs remain. And they uh, need... One eighty five more. Continuing there, the attack. Sunita. 185, now make it 184. 185 still needed. 54 for 5. Again, again, Renuka. Dealing with her voice. And uh, guiding the B1 bowlers, Varsha. Once again, on target. Straight to the B1 fielder at... Uh, square but the backward square fielder comes across with a fumble triple five on the board I wonder how will be the uh, run rate that will be dented for the West Bengal team with this uh, big loss margin how much ever possible they want to keep that loss margin under uh, a very good control straight to deep square leg this time still a single I rarely have seen any couple that's been stolen from the batters of West Bengal because the fielding has been so spot on by the girls of Karnataka Gets across. Again, there is protection. Gangama down there. Picks it up. Return. Strong returns. That's the uh, hallmark of the Karnataka girls fielding. Because they do not keep the ball with them for a longer time. They just release it so soon. And the batters have no opportunity for the second. Yeah, Netra, the coach... Would have worked a lot on that fielding strategies and skills. And she's got a lot of work to do with Shilpa tonight, for sure. Because she has to make sure that is the only 
black mark today for Karnataka in a very, very big victory that they've been heading to. If, if only Shilpa can get her uh, line right, nothing like it. Once again, swiveled across. Deep square leg, single only will be given. She's not even taking that single, even if it was given. Pratima Ghosh. She feels she can finish this off somehow, but no. Yeah, Renuka goes with yo, 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 and Varsha is ready. You need to understand as a skipper, you need to have those uh, confidence in your, in your uh, players, especially with your uh, partner who's batting with you to give the strike. End of the 14, 58 for 5 now. And uh, West Bengal just trying to go through with the motions. And we are expecting a fight back still. Gangama, the hat-trick wonder comes in to probably finish things off. Ah, she felt somewhere she could target the stumps, but it's going down the leg side. Nasira. It's one off target. Small chase. No ball by Gangama. They're in no mood to run. The West Bengal batters. That was a late call for the run, especially the ball when it's gone towards that uh, deep square leg area. It was a late call. Yeah, in the line and given, gone. And uh, I think somewhere Gangama has come back only for this. Picking up that all important wicket, captain goes. Pratima Ghosh has to go back. Probably she's uh, hurt herself a little because she was uh, playing across and it's hit her right on the knee roll. She's struggling. Pratima goes, watch her, she's just casually standing there and then goes for the shot after the ball has been delivered and uh, plumb in front, Gangama knows she is happy and celebrating. Pratima Ghosh has to go back for uh, 10 out of 27 deliveries. Her uh, valiant attempt to stay in the middle has gone down. Probably that's the uh, last flower on the frame of loss for this West Bengal team. They've lost their captain at the wrong time. Yeah, Gangama once again picking up a fourth. All important uh, opportunity for her to pick up the Pfeiffer. As Marifa Kathun comes in. If you really look at who's going to be the player of the match. It's a tough toss-up between uh, Gangamma and Varsha. If, if will you award the bowler with a hat-trick? Or will you uh, go with the uh, age-old technique of the batter? 
I feel bowlers need something, isn't it? With so much batter-oriented game, all the things that's there, even the accolades being given to the batters generally, and sometimes even uh, in a T20 format and especially a curtailed 18-over game, if you're picking up a hat trick, and that is something out of the normal. My vote is for Gangama, but let's see what the uh, official verdict would be. I'll tell you about the rules. The circulation should be proper. Because B2, B3 batters, that is uh, Nasira and Pratima Ghosh, were B2 and B3 respectively. So the next one had to be B1. And uh, Katrina Kujur comes in. So that is the rule. Now, all odds against Katrina Kujur because. She's got Gangamma. And also, there has to be a runner who is an out batter. She hasn't played. Is number nine. Is uh, Asmita Astami Mahato. The wicketkeeper cannot run. The rule is the batter who's got out has to run. So the West Bengal team having everything against them. Asmita can't run because she's not batted. And that's a rule there because every time a out batter actually should be running. With the bat, still they don't run, they don't run. Remember, for a batter, B1, Katrina Kujur, if you can put pressure on the fielders, you can convert those ones into twos because from Katrina Kujur scoring, if it's one, it's two on the board. They don't run for that. And again, Katrina's done well by hitting the ball. She's done a job. 
and Nasira does not run after 15, 60 for 6. Three more overs to go. Kavya Yanar comes into the attack and Nasira even then does not take a single. I fail to understand what is the strategy behind this for the West Bengal girls. Oh, that was very close to the leg stump. That was bowled with a, a lot of pace and a no ball because of the center line rule. The first bounce was not in Kavya's court. It was just bouncing outside the center line. Now she does well. Hits it and finally decides to run. Nasira will take the single. Now Katrina Kujur. Can they just run? Can they just uh, put that pressure and make sure the running between the wickets at least becomes a positive point of talking for uh, the West Bengal girls? Right now, all opportunity for uh, Katrina Kujur. Oh, wide outside the off stump. Lot of pace, but no direction. Again on target, hits the bat, but straight to uh, the gully fielder. And this is a dominating performance by Karnataka, no doubt. Again, Hari just asking the bowler to have uh, the proper arm action. Is the underarm should be properly executed. Yeah, that's like it. That's more like it, but no direction. This time, line. Once again, an issue. And uh, Katrina does not pick it at all. She just does not pick it. Probably she didn't hear the ball coming so close to her uh, off stump. And this has been uh, a performance that they'll have to forget, the West Bengal girls, and they'll have to come back strong in the next game. They'll have to make sure a lot of adjustments has to be done. Stuck in line, but outside the leg stump. After 16 overs, 64 for 6, and 12 more deliveries to go. Can Gangamma come back to pick up her Pfeiffer is a big question. She has to, because after getting that hat-trick, yeah, now the opportunity for Gangamma to pick up that Pfeiffer. All important stuff. And if she gets that fifth wicket, now with 80% chances with player of the match, I think 100% will be in her favour. 
probably our scorer Kirti also will agree to that. Probably uh, is he a batter or a bowler? Uh, he's a wicket keeper batter, so he will support Varsha. But I'm an all rounder bowler batter. I will support Gangama for sure. Come on, bowlers, give give something to the bowlers, guys. On the uh, on side once again, Varsha fumbles. Uh, yeah, exactly. B1 uh, fielder, she does not gauge it properly with the pace of the ball coming towards her. Let's it go, but they don't pick up a single, so that's okay. Again, straight to mid, mid wicket. Vice captain Sunita, they have done well as a team. It's Karnataka behind the stumps, Renuka. And how many times have you called out everybody's name of the team for their uh, contribution? Very rare occasions, isn't it? But here, I'm sure I've called out all the 11 names of the Karnataka team because everybody have done their job in their department very well and especially the most important department of cricket, the fielding. And bowling impeccable. Gangama, three more deliveries for her to get uh, a five for. Can she? No, off target. Off target. She will really want to get this going. And I'm just trying to keep this entertaining and exciting because the fight that was needed is not there. If there was a B1, there's Katrina Kajur on strike, probably the Pfeiffer would have come in. But uh, Nasira, I think she's not letting Gangama pick up a Pfeiffer. This is the last delivery now over. Five dot balls. She's happy playing her off does not want Gangama to probably get closer to the player of the match award there. Nasira on target. Gangama, can you? No, misses out. Misses out on a golden opportunity for a 5 for, But she'll finish with figures with 4 for 8 off her 4 overs. Still a big contender for the player of the match award. With a no over to go, 64 for 6. That's a huge appeal and that's gone. Deepika gets a second wicket. And uh, that's the breakthrough that will go down in the uh, history books as well. Of the mark straight away no it does not once again the fielding Deepika picking uh, her second wicket in the first delivery of the last over
So the final ball coming up for Karnataka to jump up in joy and say, right, we finished a very clinical performance. That's it. Karnataka win this by a huge margin against West Bengal. They win this by 175 runs. And it's uh, 64 only on the board. West Bengal will have to forget this very soon. 174 runs is what uh, the Karnataka women's have won by. And uh, now we will go in for the player of the match award, which will be much uh, conversated and debated.